So this idea of an activation energy, we likened it to a hump. Okay, so what um, the reactants have to sort of come together. They come together and they have to come together with the right orientation. Uh, they have to come together with the right frequency. Everything has to work. Everything has to be in harmony so that you can get a reaction. And sometimes the reaction products are lower energy. Okay, we call that exothermic, the lower energy. Is exothermic um, the remaining energy? Remember, we're, we're at a lower energy space, so that energy gets released. If they are at a higher energy, you need to compensate it by giving in energy. That would be an endothermic. But this activation energy is dubbed EA, and um, it's just the hump. So let me see if I could switch. If you're online or watching this um, on the internet, you're not going to see this. But um, the idea is putting a sweater on a child. So I tried to explain it during Friday's lecture. So let's see if we can do an animation here. Or not an animation, but a cartoon. So I'm going to switch here. Do we got it? No. We have it one more time. Yes. All right. So just bear with me here. So kind of the same deal here. OK, so forget about S and P. P stands for products. But I just want your attention to be focused on this hump, OK, the mountain. OK, we have to scale the mountain. The reaction has to scale the mountain. So here's a kid or a child with a sweater. Okay, our goal is to take off the sweater. <laughs> Friday's lecture, you know, we had to put on the sweater on the kid. Here we're going to take off the sweater. Okay, so it doesn't just happen by itself. Here we're going to need the help of a parent. Okay, that's called an enzyme, but we're not going to talk about enzymes. Okay, so with the help of this parent, mom or dad, or uncle, or whomever, elder, um, we have this sort of complex. They're coming together. All right, let's move down here. Okay, right here, if you look at the red. Okay, that's what we're going to call the transition state. Okay, right at the cusp, kind of like right, right before, right before stuff is going to happen, right before our reaction. Okay, here's the guy, the parent. Here's the guy. He's halfway through, halfway there, halfway there, halfway there. Okay, we call that the transition state, and that is the activation energy, that hump, okay? We have to do some work. We have to put in some energy, and that's, um, we're halfway there, and then finally, let's go all the way down. Okay, we're at the final state, the products. You see the happy boy without the sweater in his pajamas final destination, okay? So this little thing here, that uh, the maximum, the energetic maximum, that's called the activation energy, what we must have to, what we must have to overcome. You see the reactants have to come together, okay? And they gotta come together the right way. They have to come together the right way. You know, this kid could be a jerk and push and cry and bite or kick in that case, we won't get to this situation. So there's always have to be, there. excuse me, there will always have to be some sort of energy involved to get everything to work. So that's the idea behind an activation energy. If whatever I said doesn't make any sense, just think of hump, okay, a barrier. Okay, this is the barrier we have to overcome, okay, energetically wise in terms of energy. All right, so... Um, Maybe some illustration to better illustrate the concept of activation energy. Energy. I'm going to switch back to our lecture here. Uh, right. Um, we're going to wrap up chapter 13. And then um, in the interest of moving forward, I'm going to start chapter 14. I do have a couple. I only have two um, homeworks. Uh, sorry, not homeworks. Um, what do you call these? My notes. So if you want them, uh, two of you can have them. But first, let's do chapter 13. Let's wrap this up. And we're going to wrap this up with the Arrhenius equation. Okay, the Arrhenius equation. 
Today is the 22nd. <coughs> All right, so remember in our previous um, test, um, I told you about um, temperature on the x-axis and vapor pressure on the y-axis. It was a question on the exam, vapor pressure is quoted at a specific temperature. Okay, if you look at this graph, um, it has a shape like this. Lo and behold, it looks exactly like this is another one of this is another one of those weird things in science. Uh, this graph looks just like this graph here. All right, in this case, we have temperature, same temperature on the x-axis. But what we have here on the y-axis is this lowercase k rate constant. So very interesting indeed how we see uh, two totally different concepts, um, but they have a lot in common. Okay. I mean, these graphs look pretty much alike okay, in terms of their profile, in terms of their profile. Right. And like I mentioned, vapor pressure quoted at a specific temperature. It was a test question. Uh, I want you guys to know that rate constant K is quoted at a specific temperature, lowercase k. Okay, just like vapor pressure. Okay, so here's one commonality. Rate constant k, remember this lowercase k is the rate constant. Which means, let's move on to the next page here. Page 16. Which means that um, we have a rate constant K1 at T1, some temperature T1. <coughs> and um, let's change the temperature of the reaction to T2. That means we will have a new rate constant K2, lowercase k, remember. Okay, let me ask you this question here. If we raise the temperature, what do you think should happen, should happen to rate constant K? All right, I heard increases and that's correct, okay? Usually when we raise the temperature, things go fast. Okay, <laughs> the molecules are starting to dance more. More chances for collision. Okay, more chances for collisions, more uh, statistically, you have a chance to get and achieve your activation energy. So temperature makes things happen in terms of a chemical reaction. So correct, okay, whoever said that, thank you. So let's talk about the relationship between K1 and T1 and K2, T2. See, it turns out that um, you give me three, any three, and I should be able to solve for the other fourth unknown. And this is called the Arrhenius equation, or however you spell it, Arrhenius equation. Don't need to know Arrhenius equation. I mean, I won't tell you name Arrhenius equation, but uh, and this is the equation. I'll give it to you on the exam also. So um, we have the natural log rate constant K1 over rate constant K2 is equal to here, um, we have our barrier EA divided by R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. <coughs> so I'll give you this on the exam. Um, you do not need to memorize it. I will also give you R. Okay, R here is um, R is 
joules over mole Kelvin. Well, it's a constant. I'll give that to you. By the way, um, just um, throwing this out there, um, there was an equation that you guys did in our last exam. Remember this? Natural log of vapor pressure P1 over vapor pressure P2. It looks like Connor remembers it. Here, the hump is not Ea, but delta H vap divided by R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay. So um, this is from our last exam. This was called the clausius clapeyron equation. I'll just call it CC equation. And again, so the vapor pressure uh, quoted at a specific temperature. Well, that was last exam. Here, for this upcoming exam, rate constant K is at a specific temperature. And yeah, uh, raise the temperature, we would get a different rate constant. Lower the temperature, we will get a lower rate constant. Remember, rate constant is how fast the reaction is going to go. Okay, rate constant. It's a constant. It will have different units. Okay, some reactions are A plus B plus C. Some reactions are A goes to B. Some reactions are A plus B. Okay, so rate constant will have different units. But it's how fast the reaction is going to go. Right, so, here, um, so here are the two equations, but this is the one we're going to focus on. And let's do that problem here. Okay, this Friday you'll have a lab, and it's really a doozy of a lab, especially the post lab, where you do the Arrhenius equation, and then you do rate laws, and rate. So it's a, it's a good lab, but it's very intense. So, um, but it's a good lab. And, um, we'll see. I think we're learning the real data, real life, real chemistry is kind of messy. <laughs> I know I saw that with you guys on um, Friday's lab. Anyways, let's do a practice problem here. I'm pretty sure you'll see this type of problem on the exam, so make sure you are working on your quiz two, everyone. Right, so start working on your quiz two. Um, I think in the first, uh, first or second week of March, um, we're coming up with, uh, with another exam. Right, here's an application of the Arrhenius equation. So let's uh, do this thing. Okay, the first order rate constant. First order. For this reaction of methyl chloride with water to produce methanol and hydrochloric acid is 3.32 times 10 to the minus 10 inverse seconds. Okay, note the units at 25 degrees C. So we'll call this K1 and T1. Okay, notice the units here. So K, K will have different units. Okay. In this case, uh, inverse seconds, seconds to the minus 1. Calculate the rate constant at 40 degrees. So let's call this um, K2, or T2, I'm sorry. Let's call this T2. If the activation energy that is Ea is 116 kilojoules per mole. All right. So perfect problem. K1, T1, T2, what is K2? Let's, uh, let me go up here and let's write the equation. Again, you'll see this on the exam, so no need to memorize it. This is called the Arrhenius equation, remember? One over T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1. All right, the first thing I would do, step one, 
is uh, you see here R has the units of 8.1, 8.314, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12
By the way, the joules over mole cancels with the joules over mole. And this K cancels out with the, those Ks. So this is equal to natural log of 3.32 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by K2. Okay, we need to pop this out of the natural log. Okay, how will we do that? Very good, correct. Okay, we will take the inverse natural log. Okay, so take E of both sides of the equation. Take E, that's called the inverse natural log. So e to the power of natural log of all of this is just basically all of this. e to the power of natural log of this is just this. Equals e to the power of minus 2.24377. Okay, that's something we want to put on our calculator. So you guys see this? <coughs> Inverse natural log, not the natural log, but the little tiny thing above it. The inverse natural log, e to the power of x. So I'm going to do shift that e to the power of this thing. Okay, this thing is just my answer. Close the parentheses. 0 0.10605 is that. So this whole thing comes out to 0 0.10606. Let's put some extra digits there. Point one oh six oh five or point one oh six oh six. I'm just putting some extra digits in there. All right now we'll solve for K two. Our rate constant K two. So let's move K2 to this side and divide 0 0.10606 down. So everyone see that math? Okay. It's going to be 3 point. So move this K2 above, move the 0 0.10606 down. So it's going to be 3.32 times 10 to the minus 10 divided by 0.10606. 606 is equal to K2. Okay, don't forget to put the units back up okay, when you're done. 3.32 divided by 0 0.10606. 3.13 times 10 to the minus 9. You get that, Joshua? Okay, don't forget to put the units. Units are seconds to the minus one units. Okay, number is meaningless unless you put units by there. And that's the answer. So let's just take an inventory here. go back here at T1 they tell us K1 is equal to 3.32 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds to the power of minus 1 we raise it from 298 to 313 and what is our new K2 we just calculated it 3.13 times 10 to the minus 9 see look Okay, the rate constant went up from 10 to the minus 9 to 10 to the minus 10. Okay, it went up by a factor of 10, 10 times faster when you, um, yeah, 10 times faster, this reaction, when you raise the temperature from 298 Kelvin to 313 Kelvin. Okay, that's the trend. Raise the temperature, the molecules just do it more. <laughs> okay, get there faster. Right, so a problem like this on your exam, and um, you'll also see this on your um, lab.
this Friday, so um, a good chance to really, really brush up on your math for those of you that are a real intense Arrhenius equation for our lab. That's going to be on this Friday. Right, the last bit of information here is on catalysts. Come on, there you go. All right, so I'm sure for the biology majors, uh, you probably already know, even your exercise physiologists, all the, I'm sure all the science majors know what a catalyst is. Uh, in this context, in this chemistry class, I just want you to know that a catalyst does two things. Um, it will, number one, make the reaction go faster. Okay, number one. So it will make the reaction go faster. And number two, it will lower the activation energy Ea. Okay, it lowers activation energy Ea. And let me add number three here. A catalyst will make the reaction go faster. How will it make the reaction go faster? Okay, the answer is right here. It will make the reaction go faster by increasing rate constant K. Okay, so lowering the activation energy, but increasing rate constant K. Increasing K, uh, K, lowercase k. Again, um, this is something you really cannot take notes on, but I have a diagram that shows you what's happening with a catalyst. So let's switch here. I'm going to go to the computer now. So again, you can just relax just for a brief moment. Okay, what will a catalyst do? We add a catalyst to this reaction. It lowers the activation energy. Okay. So this was the reaction diagram we saw last week. A catalyst takes the blue and converts it to red. It lowers the hump. Okay, it lowers the hump. And that is the effect on the free energy diagram or the reaction progression diagram. You kind of see that here in your notes. Let me switch back. If I zoom in, you actually see in the presence of a catalyst, okay, the Ea has gone down. Okay, whereas without the catalyst, the Ea is this. <clears throat> Let me tell you about a catalyst here. Again, this is not something I can really test you on. But this is kind of interesting. Uh, if you take H2O2 from Walmart, Okay, H2O2, just regular Walmart, 3%. Um, it could actually break down into H2O and oxygen. Okay, so this is a reaction that does that. Uh, well, the pro that could be a problem because when you go to Walmart to buy hydrogen peroxide, you're not going there to buy water and O2 gas. Right? You're going <laughs> to buy hydrogen peroxide to do whatever. Well, let me tell you this. Um, this is a fun fact or f interesting story. If you take H2O2 that you get from Walmart and um, you put in 
potato. Okay, potato. You're going to have to chop up the potato and dice it and, you know, break up the potato cells. Um, you will get H2O and water in a matter of seconds to minutes. It depends on the concentration and all that stuff, but you will get this reaction in seconds to minutes. Okay, so chop up a, chop up a potato, cut it up, dice it up, real small cubes, put it in some H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, and you'll get water and you get oxygen gas. How do you know you get oxygen gas? Bubbles. You get oxygen bubbles. And that tells you the reaction is going. Right, so what the potato is, the potato is a catalyst. Okay, catalyst. All right, so here's an example of a catalyst in everyday life. More specifically, a potato, and you definitely do not need to know this, the potato has an enzyme, and um, I'm sure all the biology people know. Enzymes are catalysts in our cells, and the name of that enzyme in potatoes, catalase. Humans also have a catalase, uh, but potatoes have it in enough quantity and abundance that uh, this reaction becomes very, very apparent. All right, an example of catalysts in uh, in the potato, but really catalysts are everywhere in our cells. Right, for now, again, the key point is catalysts will make the reaction go faster by lowering the activation energy and by whatever means increasing the rate constant K. So that is chapter 13, and in maybe the last 10 or 15 minutes, I'll move on to chapter 14. I'll take a, this pause and ask if anybody has any questions or comments. I got a question about Uh huh. Um, for the quiz that we were supposed to submit, uh, it shows two of them on, uh, on my end. It shows two. Right. You, um, I made another one called Upload Quiz here. Right. Okay. Well, I think both of them say Upload. Uh, really? So, yeah. Or you're I'll just pick upload. one. We'll figure well, it out. I did, and it wasn't graded, so... But I, I oh, we're still going to grade it. We're okay, still in the process sure. of grading it. Yeah, we wanted to get the tests out. If I needed to upload it in another one, I will. So, cause there's, there's like two... Yeah, I, I, I think Adriana found yeah, out. When I clicked it the first time, it said that you couldn't submit a paper. So it was just like a regular quiz. It like clicked the question. Right. There was no question. So yeah, I that's Canvas. One, and then it came back, so um, yeah, That's Canvas crap. <laughs> so I hate it. <laughs> but, but, anybody want a copy? I have two extra copies. I'm sorry. Oh. sorry. Want to follow along? All right, so let's just uh, touch upon uh, chapter fourteen, okay? And um, well, there's something really big on chapter 14 that I want to talk to you guys about. All right, and the way I'm going to do this is by drawing, writing two reactions. Okay, let's write reaction one, very simple reaction. A plus B goes to C plus D. Okay. And uh, let me write for you guys uh, reaction two. A plus B goes to C plus D. Okay, anybody know what the difference between 1 and 2 is? The arrows, right? The arrows? Okay. So that's the big difference between reaction 1 and reaction 2, the arrows. Okay. Okay. 
you see reaction one goes to 100% completion. Goes to 100% completion. Reaction two does not. Okay, reaction two does not go to 100% completion. We will call that an equilibrium reaction. Okay, so first of all, it does not go to 100% completion. Okay, we will call reaction two a reaction that is an equilibrium reaction. So that's the first super, super, super important point about chapter 14. Okay, look at the arrow. You know, anybody remember in high school you're taking your driver's exam? Didn't your driver license, uh, what was the guy, driver's ed teacher say, you gotta check the rear view mirror, you gotta check this, you gotta look there when you're changing lanes, you gotta look at this. Um, uh, you check your accelerator, check your speed. When you were 16 or 17, I remember it. Um, well, in a chemistry problem, you got to look at everything. Okay, you got to look at everything. So, first thing I want you guys to remember is look at the arrows, right? Look at the arrows. Okay, if the arrow is this versus the arrow is that. So, this is a science where you have to, like driving a car, you, you take it for granted now, but back then when you were whatever age that was, they were telling you 10 different things you got to do all at the same time. This chemistry problem, look at the arrows. Okay, if you see that back and forth arrow, um, yeah, it's an equilibrium. It does not go to 100% completion. Okay. In fact, uh, someone, I mean, I got my PhD in biochemistry. Most of the reactions in our cell actually are this, our number two, not like number one. Okay, most of our reactions in our bodies are this way. Which means that, um, let me see if I have this out here. Okay. Here we go. So, you know, if a reaction is 100% completion, okay, you know, it's all going to go to products, right? Um, but if a reaction is going to equilibrium, you will have some reactants left over, correct? It does not go to 100% completion. Okay, so how much of it does go to completion? Is it... 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, a 100 okay? Or does it go to, I don't know, 45% completion, 30%, 10%, 5%? Okay. Here's this reaction. does not go to completion very well, okay? Because we still have reactants left over, okay? So which way is it going? Which way does it tilt? More products? or more reactants, okay? It could even be 50-50. It could even be 50-50. 50% reactants, 50% products. Does it go this way? Does it sway? Or does it go that way? Does it sway? Or does it go 50-50? So this is where we introduce numbers. Okay, we can't just say, oh, favors products. If you tell me the reaction favors products, you know, you know, people are going to say, well, how much? By how much? Is it 60%, 70%, 80%? There's a big difference between 75% completion versus 90% completion. Okay. Especially if the reaction is occurring in the body or if it's a reaction to synthesize a drug or whatnot. So for an equilibrium, we have to do the, ex for an equilibrium, we have to do the extent at which the equilibrium goes. And we call that K, capital K. Already, I want to tell you guys, this is capital K. What did we say in our previous chapter? Rate constant, lowercase k. This is the equilibrium constant. This is where a lot of my students get confused many years, you know, five years here at the Methodist campus. So. Um, It's the equilibrium constant, not the rate constant. Remember, rate constant was lowercase k, and that is um, our previous chapter. Okay. Okay. 
two totally different things. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is called the equilibrium constant. Let me tell you a little bit about capital K. Uh, let me tell you two things about it. Okay, the first one may be a relief for some of you, for some of us. Uh, the first thing is it is unitless. Okay, isn't that a good thing? You don't have to put units on your problem. Okay, unlike this one, rate constant where the units zero order, first order, second order, you got to worry about units here. Uh, K is unitless, capital K. We call this the equilibrium constant. Uh, number two, it's quoted at a specific temperature. So those are three things now that are quoted at a specific temperature. Vapor pressure, rate constant, and now this equilibrium constant, so quoted at specific T temperature. So if you do an equilibrium reaction, if you do an equilibrium reaction at a higher temperature, the equilibrium constant will be different. Why are you blurry? Or do I need glasses? Okay, I think that looks better. And um, what's the third thing about the equilibrium constant? Um, let me tell you the third, uh, the third thing about the equilibrium constant. I'm sorry. <laughs> that came on the recording. <laughs> Um, and that wasn't even a real call. It's like spam. <laughs> it wasn't even worth picking up. Well, obviously, I'm not going to pick it up in the middle of class. The third thing about the equilibrium constant, let me tell you, um, you remember, which, okay, which way does it go? This way or this way? Or is it 50-50? Remember, it does not go to 100% completion. Well, let me tell you the situation where a reaction that's 50-50 yeah, 50% reactants at the end of the day and 50% products at the end of the day. Okay, that is where our K is equal to 1. If our reaction favors the products, that is, we have more products at the end of the day, at the end of the hour, at the end of the year, at the end of whatever time, our K is going to be greater than 1. And then finally, at the end of our reaction, at the end of the hour, at the end of the day, at the end of the year, whenever the reaction is done, complete, if we have more reactants at the end, okay, our magnitude, magnitude is going to be less than 1. So here, after reaction completion, we'll have more products, P. Right? Here, K less than 1 will have more reactants R. Reaction is to the left. Here, reaction is to the right. And then K equals 1. It's not more products, more reactants. It's, um, I don't know what you say. It's the same, OK? No shift, OK? No favor. This favors products, this favors reactants, and if your K is equal to 1, it equal amounts of products and equal amounts of reactants. Okay, remember, this is unitless now, okay? So let me put a number that has units. Okay, let's say a million dollars, one million dollars. If you have one million dollars, do you think you're moving forward in life or backward in life? I, I, maybe, I don't know about you. For me, I'm moving forward in life, okay? I'll speak from my own, okay? Because some money I'll probably never see. 
Uh, if you have a million dollars, okay, you're moving which way? Forward. Forward, okay. So if you have a very, very, very high equilibrium constant, let's say a million, remember it's unitless, a million, which way are you going in that reaction? The reaction is favoring what? Reactants or products? Products. Products. Okay, products. Let's say you have 10 cents, okay? You have 10 cents right now in your wallet. Which way do you think you're heading? And you're hungry, okay? It's at, okay. You think you're moving forward in life? Slow. You're moving slow. Yeah. Or you're all your, all your debt. <laughs> you're taking classes. You're moving forward after you graduate and uh, get a job, hopefully. You get your bill from the school, okay? Think you're moving forward or backward? Okay. Okay. If, your K, if your K is less than one, okay, you're not moving forward. You're kind of staying where you are in the reactant side, okay? You're staying where you are. This, think of a number, a large, large number, okay? And the larger the number, even though K is unitless in your mind, convert it, <laughs> convert it to dollars and ask yourself the question, am I moving forward or backward? If I'm moving forward, I'm making, I'm making products. Okay, if I have a very small number, less than one, I'm not making products. I'm not moving forward in my reaction. Okay, I'm kind of staying where I am at. So that is what K is. All right, the final thing is the most important thing. The equilibrium constant is equal to this, okay? Products over reactants. This is where I'm gonna end it today. Products over reactants, they each one raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. So you gotta balance this. Balance your equation. So A to the power of A, concentration raised to its, the, the stoichiometric coefficient. All right, B, concentration of B raised to the power of B, whatever number you do. Concentration of C raised to the power of C. And finally, concentration of D. raised to the power of D, okay? So you gotta balance your equation. It's raised to the power. And then the most important thing here is no solids or no liquids. You never put solids in this and you never put liquids in this. This is another thing that students will mess up on. Okay, you don't put solids. First of all, solids don't have a concentration. Solids are not in moles per liter. And we don't put liquids there because um, usually the liquids is the solvent in our reaction. Most of these reactions are occurring in solution. The solvent does not participate. If you don't care about those explanations, just remember, no solids, no liquids in this thing. No solids, no liquids in this thing. This being our equilibrium constant. All right, I'll see you all on Wednesday. Thank you all, and uh, stay safe and be well. We'll see you Wednesday.